Hey, what's up guys? I'm Mr. Chris with infotainment.com. Today we are with our Ram truck. Um, we're gonna be doing a few upgrades all on the front end here. We're gonna kind of group all the installs into one video. So we're gonna be swapping out our bumper, adding fog lights, um, as well as adding tow hooks and swapping out the black bumper valance up top here for a painted white one. So if you're interested in seeing how any of this is done, uh, stay tuned, I'm gonna show you how. All right, so because we're upgrading to the fog light uh, and the fog light bumper on our Ram, um, we went ahead and got the painted uh, bumper valance here to give it a more premium look to match the rest of our truck, uh, as well as we got some tow hooks that we're gonna install at the same time. So we're gonna be swapping out the bumper, adding fog lights, tow hooks, and uh, replacing this valance here. So to get started, we have to basically remove this top shroud here the grill and the headlights before we get to pulling these uh, these bumper accessories off. Right up top, you have a bunch of plastic retaining clips. We call them Christmas trees because they look like a little upside down Christmas tree. You'll have to pull all those out to get this plastic cover out of the way. And I like to get my panel tool and put it underneath the plastic shroud as opposed to just pulling on the little plastic tabs. All right, we'll set that aside. And once that's out of the way, you'll see we have four 10 millimeter uh, bolts holding down the grill. You grab your socket and we'll pull those out. All right, and you'll wanna take note that the finer thread bolts go into the metal and the coarser thread bolts go into the plastic on the sides. All right, now we can just go ahead and pull our grill straight back popping it off on either side from the retaining clips. And this is a grill that we did add as an upgrade. All right, now we can remove the headlights, which there's a 10 mil up top here and another one on the bottom down here. The one on the bottom, um, it's kind of at a weird angle, so I'm gonna use a swivel to get to it. Pull these out, and then we need to access a clip on the back side of this headlight to remove it the rest of the way. All right, so coming around to the driver's side tire well, um, we actually lifted up the truck on some jack stands just so you can see a little bit better of what I'm doing. But on the inside here, you'll see this plastic flap on your uh, wheel well liner. There's a little clip right below it. You're gonna wanna pop that clip out with your panel tool. And when you open this flap up on the inside here, there's a white clip that's actually um, securing that headlight to the vehicle still. You're gonna wanna grab that clip. It's like a handle almost, a white handle, and press it up. When you press it up, you're detaching the uh, headlight from the little ball joint that it sits in. I'll actually show you what that clip looks like when I pull the headlight out. All right, so all you do from here is pull your headlight kind of towards you aiming away from the vehicle and you'll release that ball joint on the bottom here and right inside here you can see that clip that I was talking about this thing is uh, basically what you're pushing up so it creates an opening here and you can get, uh, free the headlight when it's time to lock it back in place as you can see when you pull it down that opening gets smaller securing the back of the headlight but from here we can go ahead and unplug the headlight go and we'll set this aside now that we got the headlight out um, you're going to want to come back over to the um, inner fender area of your driver's side uh, bumper valance here and you have a single eight millimeter screw on the inside you're going to want to access a single 10 millimeter bolt that's holding the inner fender to or the uh, the fender to the uh, bumper valance here it's right in the middle. You can get it either from the opening in the uh, fender liner here 
or you can get it from the uh, headlight opening. But I find it's easiest by going through the opening in the fender liner just using a swivel. So if you don't have one of these, maybe you'll find it easier to go the other way. My ratchet right there, it's right on it. Pull this off. It's kind of a weird one to get to, but it's not too bad. That one right there. All right, now we can jump over to the passenger side and do the same thing. All right, we're gonna do the same thing and start removing the 10 millimeter bolts holding the... Uh... All right, we're gonna come around to the uh, fender liner just like we did on the driver's side and pop this retaining clip off and then we'll snap our headlight out of the, uh, out of the housing here. Go. All right, now we can remove the eight and 10 millimeter bolt on this side as well. All right, now with everything out of the way and uh, unbolted, all we have to do now is pull down and kind of out, there's some clips here that we can release also. You don't need a tool or anything. You can do this with your fingers. In here, you have a bunch of clips going all the way down. You can do the same thing on the other side. And once you have this piece free, you can remove it. And we're not going to use this anymore, so we're just going to discard this. Now that we got the uh, plastic shroud removed, we can move forward to removing our metal bumper. And the easiest way I found to do that is actually to remove the uh, plastic cover that's up here that was securing our plastic shroud. And to do that, under both ends, there's two 10 millimeter bolts actually going into the vehicle. So we'll pull those off either side. Well, it's kind of hard to see there, but there's two bolts on both sides. We'll pull those off. All right, once you got all four removed, you can pull up on this cover and you'll have some retaining clips on the bottom that we'll need to pop out. And just like our plastic cover um, above the radiator, I like to go in between where the clips are mounted that way the clip stays secured um, and we don't lose them. There we go. With all four of those clips removed, we can set this aside. And now we have easy access to get to the uh, three 18 millimeter nuts on either side of the bumper. All right, so looking from the top um, of the bumper down towards the rear, you see there's two 18 millimeter nuts on the outside and towards the center here there's one um, on the inside of that frame rail. We'll pull those off on both sides. Oh, it's tightening it. All right, once they're loose, we can go ahead and remove these. And this top one right here, I'm gonna leave just kind of finger tight on there, just so when I remove the other side, I don't accidentally drop the bumper off. And on this side, I'm going to go ahead and remove all three 18 millimeter nuts. 
And now all I have to do is pull that one off that I left uh, hand tightened on the passenger side and I'll pull the bumper off. And when you're pulling it off, if you're doing it by yourself, make sure to pull from the middle and walk straight back so you don't scratch any of the uh, fender up when you're pulling the bumper off. And we'll set this aside. All right, so now that I got the front bumper off and laid out here, uh, what we have to do from this point is basically disassemble all of the parts that we're gonna reuse on our new bumper skin. So the first thing I'm gonna remove is this uh, black splash guard here. And to do that, you have a 10 millimeter uh, bolt on either side. We'll take those off. We will need to reuse that. And all the way across down the, uh, the seam here, you have um, these white plastic clips holding it on. So we'll pull off both 10 mils and we'll pull those clips off. All right, from here, we can go ahead and remove our bumper reinforcement as well as the fog light mounts. That's just a bunch of uh, 15 millimeter bolts. I think there's nine of them on here. You wanna pull all of those off. All right, and once you have this off, uh, this cover here, you don't have to remove unless you're gonna be adding in tow hooks like we are. So because we're adding in tow hooks, I'm gonna have to swap this part out with the tow hook piece that is uh, slotted here so we can fit our tow hooks through there. So basically this piece comes with new hardware as well as um, new bolts. So I'm gonna pull the four 10 millimeter bolts out of the back and I'll swap in our new, our new piece. All right, now this piece is good to go. We'll do the same thing on the other side. All right, now that we got those pieces out of the way, what we can do is grab a flathead screwdriver and we need to remove four of these 
uh, clip-on nuts here from both sides, or there's actually two, four in total, on both sides. And they remove simply by kind of wedging your screwdriver in there. So you can spread that clip open and pop it out of the, uh, out of the metal hole there. We'll just do that for all four of those. And lastly, we have these two um, plastic pieces here on the outsides of the bumper. This, I believe, holds on the uh, wheel well liner, keeps that in place. To remove these, it's just these two plastic clips on the outsides. And it should pop right out of there. All right, now this bumper is pretty much scrap metal. We're gonna grab our new bumper and transfer all the parts over. All right, we got our new bumper laid out here and we're just gonna go in reverse order and reinstall everything that we pulled off of the old one. All right, we got this mounted up. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. All right, now we're ready to install the fog lights. The fog lights came with their own hardware kit. Uh, basically, it's the same type of clip-on nut that we installed a little bit ago, as well as the bolts for it. On either side, your factory bracketry here has holes already made that line up perfectly with the fog light. Once you get everything lined up, you can see which holes need to be used to mount these fog lights. And basically there's that bigger uh, oblong hole here that's used. You can have access to slide these clips in and use two hands here. All right, just like that. And basically you're gonna do all three of those on both sides, then we can mount our fog lights. All right, once you have those in place, just set your fog light back over. It should, 
should fall into place here. And then you can grab the three bolts to secure your fog lights on both sides. And I believe those are a 13 millimeter. All right, this one's good to go. We'll jump on the other side and mount the other one up. All right, now we're ready to reinstall our splash shield down here. Just line it up and then you can pop those clips back in. Now uh, we got our bumper all assembled. But before we go ahead and install it, um, like I mentioned earlier, we're putting on uh, the factory tow hooks. So let's do that now. All right, so to install the tow hooks, they're pretty simple. There's a pin on one side and it's a lineman pin. And they're actually the same side on, on both um, tow hooks, even though the hooks themselves are aiming in different directions. So these hooks are actually reversible if you, or. Um, compatible with both sides if you didn't know. Uh, so I like the way they sit with the hooks aiming outwards. If you want them aiming inwards, you can install it that way too. It's not gonna affect anything. They'll mount up the exact same way. But once you get that pin through the bumper mounting plate here, right on the bottom, the hooks come with an 18 millimeter bolt. That'll go right through up into the frame of the truck. And that's just a single 18 millimeter bolt that you'll tighten down. We'll come back later and tighten that with a wrench, uh, make sure that's a little bit more secure. But that's pretty much it. We got this side mounted. We'll do the same thing on the other side. All right, with the hooks mounted, we're ready to reinstall the bumper. And if you're putting the bumper back on by yourself like I am, what I like to do is rest the bumper on the tow hooks uh, as I line up the bolt so I'm not struggling. All right, that looks good. We'll just start bolting everything back up like we, uh, like we removed it. All right, now with our bumper secured, we're ready to install this black bracket here. This is the bracket that will secure our painted bumper cover. So we'll just line this up in here and don't forget to clip in the four clips on the bottom before you bolt this piece in.
and we have two 10 millimeter bolts on either side underneath. And that inside one might be a little, little weird to get. All right, now we're ready for our painted upper portion of our bumper cover. To install this, basically you can kind of rest the top edge where the clips are right in front of where they're gonna snap into. And you'll wanna make sure that they're all pressed down. You can kind of work yourself around the bumper and slide this in. Now on the sides out here, you will wanna make sure that you line up the little uh, alignment pins on both sides as you're working those clips. Back it a place. All right, with the shroud in place, we'll go ahead and line up the pins um, going through our fender, and then we'll stick that 10 millimeter bolt back through there, and we'll just give that uh, a nice snug down to get that secured. And like I said, when removing this, you can go in from either side to tighten that down. I like to go in from the bottom. It seems to get a better angle. We'll do this on the other side, and then we'll move into the, uh, the tire well. All right, now on the side here, inside the tire well area, you can see our painted shroud here. It's just about lined up to our wheel well liner. We'll put that eight millimeter screw back in there. Tighten that up. And then the rest of the wheel well liner basically just slides in between that plastic piece that's in our bumper. Just like that, perfect. We'll go to the other side and do the same thing. All right, now we're ready to reinstall the headlights. Uh, before you put those in, make sure your little white clip here didn't accidentally fall down because that will definitely be a problem for you to try to put your headlight back in there. Make sure after you put your headlight in that you reattach um, that little lever inside. Basically pull down on the latch until it clicks into place. All right, and make sure you pull down that latch on the inside of your headlight. Make sure that that white latch clicks back into place. Then you can cover the little door here and put your retaining clip back in. All right, now we're ready to reattach the grill and our radiator shroud. All right, and like I mentioned earlier, the coarse thread bolts go into the plastic or on the outsides and the finer bolts go into the metal. All right, now we got everything mounted and wrapped up. Uh, the truck looks really, really nice with all the uh, upgrades that we did. Now we're just ready to wire the fog lights. All right, so to get into the wiring, where we're gonna start is actually underneath the bumper on the passenger side. 
and grabbing our harness here what you're going to be concerned with are the connectors that are plugging into the light bulbs you're going to want to grab the longer end um, of that harness and basically we're going to plug that into the back of the bulb zip tie the wire along the bumper on the inside plug in the other bulb and eventually we're going to work our way up to the engine bay and run this into the vehicle so for this all you're going to need is some zip ties and something to cut the zip ties with all right so on the passenger side here you can see our bulb and our fog light housing we're just going to plug our connector in until it clicks and basically any hole that you can use back here is totally fine to zip tie this wire we're just going to try and secure this a little bit so it's not hanging and we're just going to work it over towards the driver's side All right, once you make your way over to the driver's side, you can just connect up that side bulb as well. Click that one into place. All right, from here, we're just gonna take the bulk of the um, harness and we're gonna work our way up, uh, pretty much right behind the headlight area and work our way into the engine bay with the harness. All right, so to get the wires up into the engine bay, I'm using a long zip tie and some uh, electrical tape. I'm gonna run the zip tie down um, forward of the fuse box on the driver's side engine compartment. I'm just going to basically drop it. By looking down, you'll be able to see light underneath your vehicle. That's kind of where I'm aiming at. It's right down there. And then the other end of this, I'll tuck in here to keep that from falling back down. All right. All right, now from down here, I'm just gonna tape my wire to the zip tie and pull it up. All right, so now that we got the wiring up into the engine bay, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get this small end of the wiring harness here, and I'm actually gonna run it behind this bracket of the, uh, this little arm on the fuse box here. And I'm going to do that so the wire is mostly hidden. It's going to come around uh, up underneath here, really looking more factory. You don't have to get uh, crazy and hide the wire if you don't want to. But I want to make it look as clean as possible. So I'm going to try and tuck this wire behind as many things as I can. All right, and I'm gonna work it down on the side of the battery here. And when you get to around the uh, hood prop area, this is where you're actually gonna ground this harness. So there's a little ground loop on your harness here. So right behind the hood prop area, there's a little rubber hose where your washer nozzle uh, is fed water. You can remove that bracket by popping off this rubber hose and then spinning that little plastic bracket off and now we have a grounding point for our wire so this is a 13 millimeter nut here we'll pull this off and we can attach our harnesses ground and we'll tighten this back up all right, and now we're just left with the, these need to be ran into the cab of the truck. Um, so what we're gonna do is drill a hole into the plastic clutch plate that's back here. So you can go in uh, through any of the grommets that you want. This one is just really easy to access and you're not gonna interfere with any of the, uh, 
any of the factory wiring or anything. So all you need is a drill bit that's a little bit bigger or the same size as that wire loom. And we're gonna drill a hole directly in the center. All right, now that we got our hole drilled, I'll go ahead and feed the two wires in. And because the hole is just perfect enough to fit the wire, I'm gonna feed each connector in one at a time. All right, once I have all the slack pulled off of the wire, I'm gonna go ahead and seal up around that wire with some strip caulking. You can use silicone or whatever you have. All right, that way we don't get any water coming into our cabin. And with all of the slack left over on the wire, I'm just gonna go ahead and zip tie that up. All right, so before we move on to the next step, I'm actually gonna show you what I'm doing um, in the cabin of the vehicle on the, on the bench here, just because the BCM where it's located in this truck is so high up on the firewall, it's gonna be really hard for me uh, to give you guys a view of what I'm doing. So we have basically the same deal on our bench. This is a BCM, uh, just like the one that's in your RAM. Um, and basically you're gonna get this paper included with your uh, kit, which tells you what pins um, you need to wire the two wires that we just ran into the engine, uh, into the cab of the truck, where they need to go on the BCM. So as you can see, the right fog, and they're labeled on each wire, but the right fog needs to go to C4, D, pin 13. So uh, on the BCM here, going to be kind of hard to see but it's kind of imprinted right below the connectors the one all the way on the right is the D connector or C4 so if you're looking from um, left to right you got one two three four or a B C D this is D and this is going to be a so um, your left fog wire is going to go to connector a and your right fog wire is going to go conne uh, to connector D when you pull these out, which mind you, they're, they're pretty high up there. Uh, you may fight the, uh, fight the connector a little bit, but basically up top here, you have a little push-in type clip. You press that in and you can push this lever over. As you push that lever over, it'll push itself out and uh, you'll have your connector free. Once you have this free, you're gonna wanna pull this whole casing off. And basically, you can see on the side here, there's this little uh, plastic tab here. Once you lift that up, you'll be able to slide that right off. And now, looking at our wires here from the back side of the connector, you'll be able to find pin one. And if you look up top here, that's also very hard to see, but it's actually labeled pin one all the way through pin 12. You can flip it over on the other side. You'll see pin 13 all the way through to pin 24. So pin one here on our uh, connector here is actually, uh, pin one here on our connector is actually blank. Um, but this is where there will be a wire on your truck and all you're gonna do is tap into that wire with a posi tap that's already attached to the um, main harness coming off of the fog lights that you just ran into the engine bay. All right, once you find the wire that you need to attach to, basically your posi tap is gonna look like this. The gray end is gonna be the end that's um, free. The other side is gonna be attached to the harness. Um, there's gonna be a wire going in there. So you're gonna wanna pull the gray side off slip it over the wire that you're trying to tap. In our case, that wire is missing. So I'm using this as an example. And once it's over the wire, it's kind of wrapped around it, you'll get that piercing needle side and you'll just twist it on and that'll make a connection. So once you get that all connected up, you can go ahead and slide your cover back in place 
and reattach it to your BCM. Now on the right side or connector D, you're going to want to do the same exact thing. And pop that cover off. And on the right one, it's actually the bottom right, which ours is also empty on this harness. So the far left connector is going to be the bottom left. If you're looking at it in this upright position, it's going to be that far bottom left pin. And the top right, it's going to be that far bottom right pin. So those are the two that you're going to want to connect to up under the engine bay. It's much easier said than done. Um, you're going to definitely want to have a little bit of patience when you're messing with this because it is up there and kind of hard to get to. But we're going to go ahead and connect this up on our truck and uh, we'll move forward with the installation. All right, we got the BCM all wired up. Now all we have left to do is change our switch out. So we have the fog light button as this button uh, or this switch doesn't have that button. So in order to do that, the easiest way that I like to do it is actually pull off this side panel. Set that aside and then I reach around from the back side and it just pops out. So with your fingers, you can just kind of push that out and we'll undo the plug. And this is a plug and play deal. We'll plug the new one back in pop it back into place. Then we'll put our side panel back on. Oop, the bottom goes in first. All right, now we're ready to run our OBD Genie programmer. All right, so we just wrapped up the install, and as you can see, it makes quite a dramatic uh, difference for the outside, the uh, exterior looks of our truck, um, as well as having a little bit better visibility at night. Uh, this is a great upgrade. If you plan on doing this upgrade to your truck and you found this video informative, make sure to head back to infotainment.com for more.